Hello, welcome to Toronto Bible Study. I'm your host, Mike Sampatz, and today I'm going to look at this video that Sniffy finally made his response to my <laughs> to my many videos about him. You know, finally, right? But anyway, it's good because this is going to let the, the truth come out. But you know, I tried to make it. I tried to figure out a way to make this short. Like I know his viewers like short videos, but. I'm sorry. He just goes through so many vi so many scriptures and just takes them out of context and now I have to explain the context of them. So it's going to take some time. So I apologize for those of you with short attention spans, but I know some of you enjoy my longer videos, so hopefully you'll enjoy this one. <clears throat> Toronto Bible study is a hypocritical, slandering prosecutor, persecutor of the saints. Okay, I believe Toronto Bible study has committed the sin unto death found in First John. That has to do with Cain. He doesn't acknowledge sons of God based on their testimony, based on their belief in Jesus. He shows he doesn't believe the gospel when he denies the gospel for someone else. Lying, being a deceiver, saying they're not righteous, they're not sons of God. It's total unbelief and hatred, committing murder in his heart. First John 5.16, if any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them, that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Type of... Um you know, salvation by grace, but then sanctification, spiritual growth and rewards, by essentially law-keeping, law obeying commandments. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we're teaching, you absolute claffy, okay? We're teaching that you can get sanctification by following the law. Yes, that's what we're teaching, okay? <laughs> so this is part of the reason why I think Sifting's a bad teacher, because he takes people out of context. He takes the Bible out of context. And he just pushes his weird views that, that no one I'm aware of shares about like first John and stuff. I guess I guess Ben or Greg Jackson and uh, David Benjamin share these views that he has about first John. Which I mean, look, if you wanna if you wanna see a more involved discussion about what's wrong with his view of first John, that's in another video. I'll put the card, but um just just understand that he's he's his view is very unique. It's not widely believed and i don't know why we should think like people should accept this view so and then he's just this whole video is based on his interpretation of first john which no one else shares or very few people like so it looks like him him david benjamin and and greg jackson share it that's about it so um yeah i mean it's just ludicrous like the way he's trying to he he takes me out of context here, and he takes and he takes the Bible out of context throughout his teachings and throughout this video as I'll show, and it's just absurd. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thou shalt That's love thy neighbor teaching. as thyself. Absolute claff. Thou shalt love you thy neighbor as thyself. Thing. You absolute claff. But whosoever shall say, absolute Thou fool, you absolute shall be in danger of hellfire. Absolute claff. Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, claff. which is hypocrisy. You absolute claff. Yeah, you know what? I was in my flesh here. Okay, I was in my flesh. But if you want to talk about hypocrisy, sniffing is the one who's being a hypocrite. Because he's saying that I am committing the sin unto death because I'm denying my brother's testimony or something like this. But he's denying my testimony. He's denying my, my, my uh, salvation. Because I hate my brother, according to his view, which is backloading, as I've said before. So actually, he's the one who's being a hypocrite, all right? I know that I was in my flesh when I did this video, and I apologize, and I'm not perfect, and I never suggested that people have to follow the law perfectly for sanctification. What I'm saying is that following the law is part of our sanctification, and I will show that later in this video. Okay? We're teaching that you can get sanctification by following the law. Yes, that's what we're teaching. Okay? You literal goof. 
Thou shalt love goof. thy neighbor as thy you literal self. goof. How dare this guy? Salvation by grace, but then sanctification, spiritual growth and rewards. Why such a lofty? Follow the commandments. Um, yeah, obviously, how could you possibly? Oh, by the, by the way, too, if you can look at any of these video, any of these videos, all right. If you if you if you watch them through, you'll see that. And, and I've always made this very clear in all my discussions about salvation. There is no way to know for certain whether someone is saved or not. So I never, in the longer like portion of this video, you'll see, I never deny completely deny that that Greg Jackson is saved. I said repeatedly that you know, maybe he maybe he is saved. I personally don't think so. Okay, that's my personal opinion that I don't think he's saved because I don't think he believed. All right, it's not because I just. Uh, you know, I'm not like denying his testimony for any other reason. I just don't think he believed the truth. And once again, I'm not saying that that's certain. I've never done that. I've always said that if he did believe the truth, then he is saved. Either way, he could still be a shill and he could still be teaching a false gospel here. And that's what I'm that was, that was my point. We get sanctification by not obeying the commandments. How could you? That's sinning. If you're, if you're sinning, you're not sanctifying yourself. What kind of stupid nonsense is this? This is why, like, I can't even, oh, this is why I never made a video about this guy for so long. People are always asking me, make a video about this guy. These people are enraging. They're just, oh my God, oh. Now the works uh, of the flesh are manifest, what which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, like, lasciviousness, oh, idolatry, witchcraft, so hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, enraging. seditions, heresies. Just, oh my God. Okay, so yeah, like I said, I was in my flesh during this, making this video, and in other videos I've been, like, I'm not perfect. But these are the works of the flesh. Yeah, so this is the works of the flesh. I shouldn't have called Greg Jackson names, okay? And I shouldn't have been so angry and stuff. And I actually made a video apologizing about this. In my next video about Greg Jackson, I apologized for that. And I tried to do a little bit better with that one. Uh, but Stephanie seems to be suggesting that I'm committing adultery here. I don't know what that what that's supposed to mean. Hatred. I guess you might say that what I'm exhibiting here is hatred for Greg Jackson, but you might say it's actually love because I'm putting that time in to make a video about this guy. Even though I don't want to, I hate watching his videos. I don't want to do it. I'm doing that to, to rebuke him uh, so that he can change his ways and learn the truth. And open rebuke is better than secret love. So what I'm doing here is actually a loving thing. It's not hatred. Okay. Variant simulations, wrath. This is wrathful, so that would be a work of the flesh. That's true. Strife. Uh, yeah, maybe this qualifies as strife. I'm not sure. Maybe, possibly. And heresies, heresies. Now, this is the question. Am I the heretic or is sniffing? When sniffing says that a saved Christian cannot hate his brother, is that a heresy? Is that backloading? Backloading is a heresy. And suggesting that a Christian, a saved Christian, can't do some particular thing because they're saved, that would be what we call backloading, okay? That's what all free gracers call backloading, all right? But Sniffing, as through, through my work, Sniffing has learned that he's not a free gracer and he has stopped calling him that. And now he's just a gracer or something like this. I don't know what he is. Who knows what he is? But he's not a free gracer. But he used to think of himself as a free gracer. His discord was called Free Grace Alliance. So he was identifying himself as a free gracer. And my point was that if you're free grace, what you're teaching about First John is backloading, which makes it a heresy. All right? And so nothing I said is wrong. He was committing a heresy as if he was a free gracer at the time he, he was calling himself a free gracer. And that's a heresy. He was backloading. Now he's no longer calling himself a free gracer. Now he's a gracer or like a hyper gracer or something. Actually, yeah, he calls himself a hyper gracer now on his like Discord uh, bio thing. So then I guess I, maybe this is part of hyper grace. I don't think there's any, and none of the official hyper grace people, such as like Joseph Prince and like Stephen uh, Farley, Andrew Farley, people like that, they don't they don't talk about this interpretation of First John. So no known free no known hyper gracers talk like this, all right? So if he wants to call himself hyper grace, I mean I think he should actually consult the people who are leading that movement. 
Okay, but he calling himself. He first he was calling himself free grace, and he was against that movement with his backloading. Now he calls himself hyper grace, but according to most hyper gracers, they don't agree with his interpretation of First John. So is he even hyper grace? He should just call himself just grace or whatever. Just call himself something else. You're just your own thing. You and the David. You just call yourself Benjaminites. Benjaminites, the cult. God, oh. The cult the of Benjamin. Is sanctification by following the law. Yes, that's what we're teaching. Okay. No, no, not this one. Yeah. The whole manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. So. What Stimping is suggesting here, and he's going to get into it more later, is that because I don't know David Benjamin is my brother, I therefore am part of the world. Okay, because this says, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. So the world does not know the brethren. But so Sniffing is assuming that that means that all Christians know the brethren, but that's not what that says. Okay. Some Christians will know the brethren, some will not. If they're if they're living properly and live, walking in the spirit, as he talks about later, then they'll know the brethren. If they don't, then they won't. This is not saying that all Christians know the brethren. It's not saying that at all. There's not just okay. See if he goes on and on. Blowing the law. Yes, that's right. This see, what she's not understanding, because she's a foolish, ridiculous, like fake Bible teacher. Right? Oh, like, this is just ridiculous, ridiculously bad. Okay, like it's just oh, these people are just foolish. It's just nonsense, man. I don't know. I think you can look at any of those videos, and I make my points as to why I think that woman, Eva Saint by Grace, is so foolish. I make my points about why. Uh, what's his name? What's her name? Renee Roland is a false teacher. I make my points. I make I make an argument, but he's just like oh. Down to like ones like these little sound bites. <clears throat> Just based on that, it's like, oh, this guy's not, he's committing a sin unto death. What? What are you talking about, man? And, and doesn't it, anyway, whatever. You know the fruit? St. AVS hmm. is an unlearned, unstable teacher at best. Unlearned and unstable, false teacher at best. That's the best scenario for that guy. The worst case scenario is that he's a shell. You guys find deceptive. So by calling him a, a false teacher, unlearned and unstable false teacher, that's from that's from Second uh, Peter three fifteen to sixteen. But there, Peter was talking about saved people. So saved people can be unlearned and unstable false teachers. And so I wasn't denying AVS's uh, salvation. In fact, in that video, you can hear that I I repeatedly say that I think he I assume that he believes the truth and is saved. I was just saying that he's a false teacher and he's unlearned and unstable. Now with this Jack, Jack best, Smack business. That's the best scenario for that guy. The worst case scenario is that he's a shill. Jack Smack's deceptive. See, see this Jack Smack thing? Now, now remember that. He calls Jack Smack a bro. Okay, that means like a brother. A brother in, bro in Jesus, brother in Jesus, saved. Right? But I'm going to show you something that According to Sniffing's own words, Jack Smack does not qualify for that. Okay, so we'll talk about that. Or maybe he does. I don't know what, what Sniffing's going to say at that point, but maybe. Yeah, which, is another, which is another, like, clue that he's just a deceiver and a heretic in his flesh. No, I absolutely believed in the free grace doctrine that says Jesus, being God, sacrificed himself on the cross as a complete perfect payment for sins of all people of all time because you are incapable of living perfectly by the law yourself and all you have to do to go to heaven is believe that is true and that your sin debt has been covered by Christ. I believed it with all my heart, not thinking that any sins can send anyone who has ever believed in that to hell. Free anyway, that's not that's not what it is, okay? Look, it's not all that confusing weird nonsense that he just said. That's just more, more of the confusing things that these shills try to push. This idea that you have to believe in the finished work of Christ on the cross, that's another thing. I've been talking about this in several several of my recent videos. It's just a bunch of foolishness, just a bunch of foolishness, just a bunch of foolishness. But the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. So what he's trying to say that is because I said that was foolishness, that therefore I'm against the preaching of the cross. 
and I'm saying that's foolishness when I'm not saying that at all. I preach the cross myself. You can see the description of this video. I preach the cross. Okay, I'm not saying the preaching of the cross is foolishness. What I'm saying right here in this video about Young Don is that saying that believing in the cross is necessary for eternal life is foolishness. Okay, that's my position. I'm the so called crossless gospel people, and we'll get into that later too. And that, that debate is good to have as well within the free grace camp. But I'm just saying to you that we have, like, within the free grace camp, we're, a we're able to have that debate. But Stiffy's not even in the free grace camp. And many people do still think of him as free grace, but he's not. Business, all right? That people, people <clears throat> bring that in from the doctrine of men that they've been taught, the traditions of men. Now, we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then, he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. He <laughs> I'm persecuting I'm persecuting you. I have the smaller channel. He's the bigger channel coming after me. And St. AVS has 100,000 subscribers. They came after me. Who's persecuting who? I just called you guys what you are. Uh, uh, what's his name? Sniffing was calling himself free grace. And he was preaching backloading. So he's a literal heretic according to free grace. That's what I called him, okay? Uh, St. AVS is an un unlearned and unstable false teacher. That's my opinion. I have a right to that, and that's what I called him, and I made my case for why I think that, okay? He came back at me and, and said I was an antichrist and uh, an abomination and all these other things. He kept, he kept all these accusations he leveled against me, okay? With his hundred thousand audience, right? And you guys are acting like you're the ones that are persecuted, right? But actually, no, you're persecuting me, okay? So just let's make that clear again, because you're literally de you're literally denying my testimony as you're saying, which you say you claim that no Christian can do that. If you do that, you're not a Christian. Well, you're denying my testimony right now. So I don't know what. Anyway, this whole thing is just ridiculous. Even so, he's now title this video born after the flesh, him oh yeah 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 it's born after the flip so we're the children of the promise you see we're the ones who preach that we're supposed to believe the promise we're the one the crossless gospel people we say you have to believe the promise okay and my problem with with uh sniffing is that he's telling people to believe the the cross the death burial resurrection and he doesn't talk about the promise okay the promise of eternal life. This is the thing. The crosses people are saying that belief in the promise of eternal life is critical. And even the people like on the other side of this debate in more official circles, like the like the actual Free Grace Alliance, the actual like collection of scholars and, and Bible teachers who are formed an association called the Free Grace Alliance, they teach the death, burial, resurrection thing, but they also include the promise. The promise of eternal life. The, per the person must believe that. But later on, Sniffing talks about it, and he doesn't include that. So he's not the one born after the promise. He's not the children of the promise. Or, I mean, at least, anyway, this verse doesn't help Cliff Sniffing's case, but he's pretending that it does. Um, he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. Yeah, well, you don't believe the promise, according to what you said later on. And... So you're born after the flesh and you're persecuting me who's born after the spirit. I do believe the promise. I also believe the death, burial, resurrection. So according to your own like knowledge of, or your own like whatever thing that you believe, right? About salvation, I'm saved. I clearly am saved according to your own belief about what you're supposed to believe to be saved. I believe the death, burial, resurrection. I believe the promise, okay? I'm, I'm completely saved. But you're trying to say that I'm born after the flesh and I'm unsaved because I denied my brother's testimony. What a joke. What a born joke. after the spirit. Even so is now. Title this video, Toronto Bible Study is a hypocritical slander. Oh, this is another thing. You see, he's slandering me here because when you put that, I obey the law, he says that in quotes, in quotes, right? When you put the quotes, 
the understanding, the official understanding of that in English grammar is that whatever he, whatever is in those quotes is a direct quote that I specifically said, right? Now, it's possible I said something like that. I highly doubt it. What I do say is, yeah, we, should, we must follow the law. Follow it. And I will talk about that. During Persecutor of the Saints. So Toronto Bible Study on YouTube likes to make multiple videos attacking the saints as if we don't have enough opposition already. There's a whole world of false damnable false prophets out there, but instead he'd rather waste time and quote unquote expose the saints. Cause this is the thing. So I'm not attacking you. I'm rebuking you for your false doctrines. If you change, if you start teaching right, then I'll just take down my videos or whatever. Maybe I'll leave them up. I don't know, but I, I won't attack you anymore. And I'm not attacking you. That's the thing. I'm just rebuking you. So that's the thing. So they, they say these kind of words, attacking, and he's sowing discord and all this stuff. Well, no, I'm rebuking you for your false teachings. I point it out. I actually prove where you've done it, okay, in my videos. So it's unfair to say that I'm attacking you or I'm doing something, like, negative. I'm not. I'm doing a loving thing by showing you where you're wrong so you can correct your errors, you know? And you haven't proven that I'm wrong in what I showed you, but I'll, I'll talk about that, I guess. Double false prophets out there, but instead he'd rather waste oh, time. Oh, by the way, the other thing is, yeah, I have like hundreds of videos, literally, about false prophets, or over a hundred, anyway. Over a hundred videos about false teachers, okay, that are not these guys. I have a few videos about these guys because I believe they're teaching wrongly. I point out where they're teaching wrongly, okay? I'm not attacking them. I'm just pointing out where they're wrong. There's nothing wrong with it. I, I didn't do anything physically to you. I didn't, I didn't do anything, like, violent towards you. I just point out the things you did wrong. You taught wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. If you can't defend yourself, defend yourself on the points I made, then then it's your fault, you know? And he's going to try and do it here. But it's and then, quote, unquote, expose the saints causing strife and discord. He even goes as far as to say they're not real brothers when they believe the gospel. And I think this guy's a show. I don't think he's a real brother. And Greg Jackson. Believe the gospel, yeah. Well, they believe, believing the gospel is not what makes you a brother. Believing on Jesus Christ is what makes you a brother. And these guys still don't get it. They always take me out of context to try, CNABS took me out of context to try to say, oh, you have to believe the gospel. The gospel is Jesus Christ. Well, where does it say that? Where does the Bible say that the gospel is Jesus Christ? Where? The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. It doesn't say believe the gospel and you'll be saved. It does not say that. Okay? You can look at Romans 1.16 if you want. You want to try to say that that proves your case or something? You have to believe the gospel to be saved? Well, it doesn't say believe the gospel. It says the gospel is the power unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Okay? What do they believe it? They believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what most people in your in your so-called cross gospel camp, the DBR camp, that's what most of them would argue. They're not going to try to say you have to believe the gospel to be saved. That's stupid. You have to believe in Jesus Christ to be saved. That's how you get eternal life. Sal, if he was a real Christian, he would point this out. But he's not. He's a shill. That's wicked as hell. That alone proves he doesn't care about truth. It's not possible for someone to believe the gospel and not be saved, not to be considered a brother. Yeah, I never, I never suggested that. What I was suggesting is that they don't really believe the gospel, okay? And again, I just was suggesting that. I never said it's a certain fact that I know that or anything. Again, if you look at the context of all those things, I always state that if you ever did believe the gospel, then they are saved. But a person who believes the gospel can turn around and do anything. We don't know what they could do. They could do the wickedest evil things, including denying your testimony, all right? So that's the point of what free grace is. We believe that just because they believe the gospel doesn't mean that they can't go around and teach wrong things, deny other people's testimony, hate other people, or kill other people, or whatever. My point is just that. So for when these people say, uh, when I say about these people that I don't think they're saved, it's because, and again, like I say, I very, I may very much qualify all of those statements in my videos. But when I say that, what I'm saying is that they never believed. I'm not saying that they believed and then I denied their testimony. He doesn't care about truth. It's not possible for someone to believe the gospel and not be saved, not to be considered a brother. Toronto implies it is possible. This is exactly what came. Yeah, so I didn't imply that. And just because someone's a shell doesn't mean they're not saved. I never suggested that all shells are unsaved. I never suggested that. Most shells are probably unsaved, yeah. 
because they just don't really believe it. They're just saying it. But it's possible that shells are saved. I never suggested that it's possible. That's impossible for them to be saved. Cain did table. Cain didn't see his brother as righteous when Abel offered up the blood. Oh, yeah, Toronto implies it, it is saved. possible. It's not possible for someone to believe the gospel and not be saved, not to be considered a brother. Toronto implies it is possible. This is exactly what Cain did to Abel. Cain didn't see his brother as righteous when Abel offered up the blood sacrifice. If Cain saw Abel as righteous, he would have never killed them. This doesn't make any logical sense. Why would you hate and kill someone you think is righteous? No, Cain did not see his brother Abel as righteous when he offered up the blood sacrifice. And the now, now here's, here's like a thing. He's, so he's trying to say that because this is his interpretation of First John three fifteen in that section. I guess let's let's go to the Bible here for a second here, so we can talk about this. Because this is just foolishness too. It's just absurd what this person is talking about, man. Just completely nonsense, foolishness. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. So this is a problem for sniffing because he thinks that we're supposed to take that to mean that they don't have eternal life. They don't have, they're not saved, right? As I, uh, as I point out in my video about him, that's backloading. But what that actually is in, in the normal interpretation that free gracers make about this book is that this person, this murderer is not in fellowship with God. And they, they don't have eternal life abiding in them because the eternal life is Christ. And when, you, when you're in fellowship with God, he abides in you, okay? And once again, I, I, I explained this more fully in my video about him, and I won't get into it right now, but that's what that is, okay? Sniffing is insisting that that means that they're unsaved. And so he needs to explain this. How, how, because we understand that most Christians can hate their brother. We don't, we don't think that that's impossible. So he has this thing that, no, it's actually, um, it's actually, um, denying their testimony. It's not, it's not actual hatred of your brother. It's just denying their testimony, denying that they are your, in fact, a, a saved Christian. So when I do that to Greg Jackson or what do you mean or whatever, that means I'm hating my brother, according to 1 John. And that means I have no eternal life abiding in me and therefore I'm not unsaved. That's Sniffing's argument. And he's saying that this is because, and the way he reads it like that is because of this, this part where it says about Cain. Okay, we should love one another. This is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. So he's trying to say, Sniffy's trying to say that because this thing appears close to 315, that this is what John means by hating your brother. It's this thing about Cain. Of course, Cain slew his brother. That's what that's what John was talking about, hating your brother, right? But, but Sniffy means Sniffy somehow he thinks that that means denying their testimony. Or, or, or not acknowledging them as righteous. All right. But look what, look what it says here. And wherefore slew he him? Why did he slew him? Why did he kill his brother? Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. So the reason why Cain killed Abel is not because he did not acknowledge his brother as righteous. It's because his, his works were evil and his brother's righteous. So he knew that his brother was righteous, and that's why he killed him. That's literally the reason why he killed him. Okay, that's what that says in the Bible. But let's listen to what, what um, Sniffing says again. This is so foolish. The same Cain didn't see his brother as righteous when Abel offered up the blood sacrifice. If Cain, Cain see, he said Cain didn't see his brother as righteous. The Bible says that he slew him because his works were righteous, okay? His works, by the way, his works. Not his faith, nothing like that. I mean, he did this by faith. That's true, Hebrews 11. But it's not, it's the works that, that, that uh, reason why Cain killed him. His works were righteous, and Cain killed him for that reason, okay? Cain saw Abel as righteous. He would have never killed them. 
this if Cain saw Abel as righteous, he would have never killed him. Did this guy read the Bible that we just read? Or, or what is he talking about? What is Sniffing talking about here? He's just putting his own interpretation into the Bible. That's not what the Bible says. Sniffing is just reading his interpretation into the book. It's called eisegesis. It's like literally the opposite of how you're supposed to read the Bible. If Cain saw Abel as righteous, he would have never killed them. This doesn't make any logical sense. Why would you hate and kill someone you think is righteous? Why would you hate and kill someone you think is righteous? Well, that's what the Bible says. That's what 1 John 3, 13 or whatever, 3, 12 says, okay? That's what it literally says, sniffing. So sniffing is using his logic, quote unquote, to to disprove what the Bible literally says. And he's telling you that that's how you make doctrine. That's how he comes up with his ridiculous, foolish doctrine. OK, so I don't know, man, if you guys are fans of this guy, like, I'm sorry, but, you know, I tried to help him. I'm trying to help him. I still think he can come out of this and be a good brother, whether he's saved or not. He can be saved and be a good brother, but right now he's being a heretic, okay, by teaching backloading. No, Cain did not see his brother Abel as righteous when he offered up the blood sacrifice. In the same way, Toronto Bible Study does not see bros like the YouTuber What Do You Mean, Greg Jackson, and David Benjamin as righteous. So now, now he's trying to say that because I don't see those guys as righteous, even though, once again, it was... It was Cain's, Cain saw that, that Abel's works were righteous and his own works were evil. And that's why he killed them. Now, now Sniffy's trying to say that I, because I like, I don't believe in their faith that therefore I don't see them as righteous. And therefore I'm just like Cain. So he's just completely butchering the, the Bible, the word of God. Okay. He's just doing, he just wants it to, he's using this thing, this the Bible to attack me, right? And if you guys think this is okay, you have something seriously wrong with your whole Christian like life, okay? Because you, you don't get it. You don't get it, man. If you think this is okay, what he's doing right now is not okay, okay? He doesn't recognize them as brothers. He is like Cain. He is like Antichrist, false prophets, Ray Comfort, and David Lynn who also refused to acknowledge sons of God. Tell me why Jesus... Yeah, like he's calling these guys Antichrist false prophets. Uh, Ray Comfort and um, that other guy from Toronto, that guy. David Lynn. But look, and I, what he means is that they're unsaved, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. That's what, he's, that's what he's trying to say, that they're unsaved. And once again, we don't know that, okay? They could both be saved. And just they're confused, preaching a false gospel, okay? But sniffing goes around saying everybody's unsaved if they don't if they don't preach like him, and he's doing it to me now. He's saying I'm unsaved, okay? So who is the one who's going around denying people's testimony? Who is the one? Is it me or is it sniffing? You know? Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and to let everybody who believes in him. Go to heaven. All right, we're talking about your eternity. If you die in the state you're in, you'll end up in hell according to the Bible. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in him for salvation. I don't trust in my own righteousness. So, so just before we we're go We're talking about on. your eternity. If you die in the state you're in, you'll end up in hell according to the Bible. So he denies the gospel. That's true what he's doing. He's denying the gospel. But sniffing is equating that with hating your brother. Now, first of all, if sniffing is correct that Ray Comfort is an antichrist and unsaved, how are they brothers? Uh, how are they brothers in any? They're not brothers. The, the brothers, the brotherhood is the, among the Christians. Okay, he's trying to say that if you ever deny your your brother's testimony, that therefore you're not saved. Well, how are they? We're not even brothers if I deny it. Like if if I'm unsaved because I deny their testimony, that means we're not brothers. So 1 John 3.15 is about hating your brother, right? Your brother being your brother in Christ. So that's just another failure of, of Sniffing's uh, interpretation, which is just 
ridiculous foolishness. Bible. Even the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in him for salvation. I don't trust in my own righteousness. Why, why, why are you making satanic signs, man, with your fingers, bro? Okay, sure. I don't trust in my own work <laughs> and repenting of my sins right, against man. the head. Have a so-called Christian trying to come in the middle of a preacher to stop the preacher from... Yeah, so he hates that he hates that guy because he's denying his his testimony, right? That's what Snippy saying. But how is he hating his brother? If he's not if he's not unsaved because he did that, then that that guy's not his brother. So Sniffy's whole whole interpretation is just foolish and ridiculous. Preaching and he thinks he's walking with God. You're walking with the devil. Type of um And I think this guy's a show. I don't think he's a real brother. And Greg Jackson. Now, if he was a real Christian, he would point this out. But he's not. He's a show. First John. No, I just want to say, yeah. When I say real Christian there about about uh, what do you mean, I'm not sure what I said in that video exactly how I qualified it. Maybe, maybe I was uh, uncharitable in that sense. But when I say real Christian there, what I meant is that if he was real, a real disciple following Christ and not being a shill, you know, which I do think, I still maintain that he's a shill. I do not think that means he's necessarily unsaved, but I certainly think it's possible. Okay. I'm not saying that he's definitely unsaved though. And when I said fake Christian, what I meant was that, yeah, he's uh, teaching it false. Even Abby, what's her name? Abby Stuckner, Stuckner or whatever her name is. That woman that, that, what do you mean, was talking about? I don't even think, when I say she's a fake Christian, it's the same thing. I just think these people who do those kind of shows and stuff are fake. And they're not really uh, real true disciples of Christ. But I'm not commenting on whether they're saved or not. Because uh, my belief is that anyone who believes the gospel could be saved. And they could go and do whatever they want after that. It doesn't affect their salvation. So, and that's clear. My position on that is very clear. So I never really, I never really say that for certain I know somebody's unsaved. I never do that. I always make it, I was, it's just my opinion that they're, and then even when I was saying that those people are fake Christians, uh, what do you mean, man, Abby, what's her name? I never was trying to say that, um, that they're definitely unsaved or anything like that. I was never trying to say that. John chapter 2, starting verse 29 reads, If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Now what's it mean to do righteousness? Believe in Jesus. The land so you see what he's saying? Like this, this scripture says, you know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Okay. And he's so, and he's saying that that means you have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only way you can do righteousness according to sniffing. And that's not what John's talking about here. He's talking about how you can identify brethren who are already believers. They do righteousness. Only the believers do do righteousness, okay? And it's not just believing in Jesus. There's other forms of righteousness that we do, okay? So that's not what this is about, and that's just ridiculous. Born of him. Now what's it mean to do righteousness? Believe in Jesus, the Lamb slain. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Those that believe in Jesus are born of God. They are the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. The world doesn't recognize us as sons of God based on our belief in Jesus. He's not talking about that. He's saying that, look, the people, ye know, you, the audience who are believers, they know that everyone that does righteousness is born of him. So that's a way that they can know now if they see somebody doing righteousness, they know that that person is born of God, born of uh, God through faith. The world doesn't have the ability to do that because they don't understand what righteousness is. They don't have that knowledge. They don't have that ability. It's not suggesting that, you know, that anyone who doesn't recognize their brother must be unsaved because the people of this like john's writing this letter to some people right they're saved christians 
until they read this, they didn't know how to recognize the brethren. So until they actually read this, many of them, maybe maybe some of them knew, but some of them didn't know. And so they would not be able to recognize the brethren. So it's not saying that just as soon, if you don't recognize the brethren, that means you're not saved. That's not what this is about. That's not what it's talking about. And so just because somebody doesn't recognize the brethren or whatever, that is not an indicator of how that whether they're saved or not. But this is this is exactly how the workspace people interpret this this book of John, as if it's this test of whether you're saved or not, like all these things like this. Oh, that's how you can know whether you're saved or not. That's what these people, like the Calvinists and those people, when they interpret First John, that's how they read this stuff, and that's what Sniffing's doing. But real free gracers, we understand that that's not what this is about at all. Based on our testimony, that's how you know who is of God and who is not of God by what they believe. How do you know? No, it's not. It's not because it's, not, it's based on whether they do righteousness. Okay, so their testimony is one way of doing righteousness there's other ways but when they do righteousness that's how you know that's what that says but he he just switches do with righteousness he just changes that into oh uh believe in jesus that's all that's all do with righteousness could ever mean in first john and so and so now now when he reads on that and that false interpretation where he just literally put his own words in to change what those words actually say then when you read that then then that's where that's how his other interpretation of the rest of the verse makes sense or the rest of that passage but that's not what it's talking about you know what someone believes by not of jesus based on our testimony that's how you know who is of god and who is not of god by what they believe how do you know what someone believes by what they say what comes out of their mouth in the same chapter, verse 7 reads, Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. In other words, don't let Toronto Bible study deceive you. Don't let him deceive you by saying someone is not saved, someone is not a righteous brother, even though they do righteousness, even though... Look, again, this is just this ridiculous misinterpretation. He's just pulling verses out to support his view this is ludicrous this interpretation of the bible okay and it's just it's just wickedness because he's just taking verses out to say what he wants them to say now what does that say let no man deceive you he that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous even as he is right who's he jesus christ so what he was sniffing according to sniffing's argument the people who I deny their testimony, they are as righteous as Jesus Christ, even as he is righteous. Okay, but actually, if you understand what he's really talking about here, what he's saying is that our in our inborn, uh, reborn spirit, that, that is, uh, he did his righteous, even as he is righteous, that's the thing that inborn spirit in us is doing righteousness, even as Christ is righteousness, righteous, because he's as righteous as Christ. He's like, he's like perfect. Okay. And so when we do righteousness it's from that, it's from him, it's from the spirit within us, because it's even as he is righteous, it's not just us, all Christians are like this because it's even as he is righteous that's christ's perfect righteousness we're not like that okay but our inborn spirit is because that is perfect okay so that's what that is about it's not talking about like everyone who who believes in jesus and says it is righteous even as christ is righteous that's not what it is but sniffing would have you believe because of that because he just wants to, he just wants to push his interpretation onto you because that's what that's this deceitful uh, mishandling of the word of God, you know. So they believe the gospel. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. Yeah, he doesn't talk about that. He that committed sin is of the devil. So if 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 anybody who believes in Jesus is righteous, even as he is righteous, right? <laughs> that's what that means, right? uh then what what about these people that committed sin 
and they're of the devil. Does that mean anyone who commits sin is is not saved? That's what that, according to Sniffing's interpretation, that's what that would be, right? According to a proper interpretation, what that's talking about is that people, when, even when we sin, he's talking about Christians, right? He's saying that when Christians sin, we are of the devil, all right? And it's not about, I'm not saying that we're unsaved. It's just that our mind has been seized by the devil or we're being used for his purposes. We are of the devil when we sin. And it's similar to what uh, Jesus says to, to Peter in uh, Matthew, I think Matthew 16, 18, I think, but I'll put it in the chat. He, he says, get thee behind me, Satan, to Peter. And it's that same exact thing. When people have those kind of sinful thoughts or sinful behaviors, they are of the devil. They're doing the devil's work. Not sinful thoughts, but sinful behaviors. Not sinful thoughts. We all have sinful thoughts. It doesn't mean you're of the devil. When you do it, when you act on them, you're of the devil. That's all that is, okay? It doesn't mean you're unsaved. It just means that you're, at that moment, you're working for the devil. You're doing his work. ...that he might destroy the works of the devil. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. And this so you see how he doesn't even talk about that part? I mean, like, this part can be understood. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. We can understand that if we understand that he's talking about the uh, newborn spirit within us. And I think Sniffing in other videos has talked about that for that verse. But it's the same thing for this other verse up here, verse 7. Let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. That's righteous as Christ is righteous. It's not just any sinner who, who believes in Jesus or any Christian who believes in Jesus that they're like that. That's not what it's saying. It's talking about people who, it's talking about our newborn spirit is righteous even as Christ is righteous. But anyway. In this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. In other words, he that doesn't believe in Jesus is not of God, neither he that loves not his brother. For Wait, Jesus is not he that loveth not his brother. In other words, he that doesn't believe in Jesus is not of God. Oh, you see what he's saying? So now, and this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. So he's saying that you have to do righteousness, that's believe in Jesus, or you're not of God, right? Or you're not saved, right? But that's not what that's talking about. It's like, it's just saying that if you're not doing righteousness, you're, you're not, um, you're not in fellowship with God. Okay, it's not saying that because there could be Christians who you're capable of righteousness now that you're Christian, but you could maybe not do righteousness, right? It doesn't mean you're unsaved. But according to sniffing, you have to do righteousness to be of God, to be saved. But I guess what he's saying is that do with righteousness is just only just believing in Jesus. But that's not what I mean. This whole book is not because it's written to believers. So it's not considering that uh, the only thing do with righteousness means is is just believing in Jesus. That's just a foolish way of interpreting this book because it's written to believers. They're all believers. They don't need to be told that, you know, they, what he's talking about is how to be in fellowship with God. And if you don't do righteousness, you're not in fellowship with God. That's what he's saying, but you're not still, he is not saying they're unsaved. It's just that they're not in fellowship. And if you don't love your brother, you're not in fellowship with God. But again, that's not, that's not like about um, just denying their testimony or whatever. It's actually loving them, actually showing them love. Neither he that loves not his brother. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brethren. If See, so once again, he doesn't even acknowledge that. He was saying before that Cain slew his brother because he did not acknowledge his brother was righteous. 
But this literally says that he slew his brother because his brother was righteous. His works, his brother's works. Um, but you look how it says that not as Cain who was of that wicked one and slew his brother. Of that wicked one, meaning when he slew his brother, he was of that wicked one. Doesn't mean Cain was unsaved. We don't know whether Cain was unsaved. If the world hate you, and why does the world hate you? Again, because it doesn't know you. It doesn't acknowledge you as a son of God. We know. That no, that's not what that's not what he's saying. No, that's not what what the the world hates the Christians because they acknowledge that they're that they're. Uh, well, I mean, because they're Christians. Maybe maybe Stephanie's gonna say they don't acknowledge the truth of a Christian being the son of God. I guess that's what he's saying. Um, but the world hates us because we're Christians. It doesn't hate us because. They don't acknowledge our testimony. That's not what that says. It's not. I mean, Jesus talks about how um, the world will hate, hate, not hate them that are not their own, and they and then they hate. Um, they hate us because we are of Him, and because it doesn't know you, it doesn't acknowledge you as a son of God. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. In contrast, believers love the brethren because unlike the world, we recognize sons of God. No, that's not what that's saying. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. So if you love the brethren, that means you're doing righteousness. That means you're born of God. That's how you can know that you've passed from death unto life. That's how you guess one way you can know. That's what that's what John's saying. He's not suggesting that every Christian will love the brethren. That's not what that says. And that's just, just sniffing, reading into it again, reading his interpretation into the book. Because unlike the world, we recognize sons of God. Oh, and also the other thing, the other thing. He keeps saying that, that loving you know, the brethren is just recognizing them as sons of God, as if that's what John's talking about. John's not talking about that. He's saying love them, like literally love them, love them, sacrifice yourself, put them before you, like sacrifice your interests for theirs and show love to them. That's what John's talking about. But the, but the Bible clearly shows us is love. First Corinthians 13, um, uh, Luke chapter ten, the the story of the uh, uh, the story of the good Samaritan. That's what loving your brother is. It's not just acknowledging that they're that they're that they're um, that they're saved or whatever, but sniffing is acting like. And then and and once again, that's the brethren. So they're we're brothers, and I'm acknowledging that. That's the love, right? So sniffing's trying to say that the world doesn't love the brethren well they're not the brethren to them anyway this is just foolishness man of the brethren in contrast believers love the brethren because un unlike the world we recognize sons of god based on their profession but so that's all that's all it is to, rec to to love the brethren or is he saying that that we recognize them and we love them so either way he's trying to say that all believers well, not only recognize the brethren, but love them. Or maybe he's just saying that loving is recognizing. Either way, it's backloading. Okay, either way. I don't know what exactly he's saying here. He's either saying that all believers will recognize the brethren, or he's saying that that will recognize the brethren and love them. Either way, it's backloading. Okay. World, we recognize believers love the brethren because un unlike the world, we recognize sons of God based on their profession he he that is of the world that loveth not his brother abideth in death he that is of the world that means he just added that right that's not what that says right uh but he's talking about but john is actually talking about saved people he's not talking about the world here okay but sniffing literally just added words into the bible in order to pr promote his false interpretation i hope you see what i'm saying i hope i'm not like this is wickedness. Eh? He's literally adding words to the word of God in order to give his false interpretation to you. Okay? This is wicked. Wicked. Okay? But anyway, he says, John's saying, He that loveth his brother abideth in death. So 
he's talking about save Christians. If you don't show love to your brother, you abideth in death. He's not saying they're unsaved. He's saying that they're living in that kind of life of death. He's not, they're not like uh, uh, abiding in Christ. And if you're not abiding in Christ, you're abiding in death. That's what he's talking about. That's what John's talking about. Sniffy's trying to make you think that John's saying that the world doesn't love the brethren, therefore they abide in death. But the world is not brothers. They're not brothers. Okay, so sniffing, you're just mental. This whole thing is just ludicrous. Everything you're saying. Nice sons of God based on their profession he he that is of the world that loveth not his brother abideth in death whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him yeah so once again our interpretation the proper interpretation is that this is about uh fellowship so if you hate your brother as a christian if you hate your brother you're basically a murderer and you will not have eternal life abiding in you. That is Christ will not abide in you. Okay. It doesn't mean just because you have some feeling of hatred towards your brother, you're going to be out of fellowship. But if you have this pattern, consistent pattern of hating your brother or your brethren and stuff, and that just goes on, you never ask for forgiveness and stuff. Eventually you're going to lose fellowship. Okay. So what does it mean to love your brother? Love your brother according to the law. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. No, no one does that. To love your brother means you know who they are. You acknowledge them as righteous. as some See what he's saying? To love your brother means you know who they are and acknowledge them as righteous. Why? Why would that be loving your brother? Where in the Bible does that is that described as love? Just knowing that they're... Knowing that they're the brethren, just knowing it, that means that I love them. What? What are you talking about? But again, he just wants to push his view onto you. This is horrible interpretation, okay? You just see how his, like, how his followers are just like, oh, your Bible knowledge is so amazing, sniffing. What? You? Anyway, whatever. I, I feel sorry for people that are so ignorant like that, but. Sons of God based on their belief in Jesus. And con no, no one does that. To love your brother means I love thy neighbor as thyself. By the way, yeah, we we are supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves. And of course, yes, he's right. No one does that. But we 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 strive to do this. Okay, that's what it is to be a, a good Christian, a disciple. Okay, if you want to be a good disciple of Christ, you should try your best to love your neighbor as yourself. When you mess up on that, pray to God, ask for forgiveness, and He will. He's Faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. No, no one does that. To love your brother means you know who they are. You acknowledge them as righteous, as sons of God based on their belief in Jesus. In contrast, to hate your brother is to not recognize them as righteous. To not recognize them as sons of God. So now, so now he's saying that to hate your brother is to not recognize them as, as righteous. Right? So if you don't recognize your brother as righteous, that is, as sons of God, you're hating them. So that's what hate is for him now, okay, in his mind. Like, that's what John's talking about, supposedly. Where do we see, where else in the book would we, would we get this impression that that's what hate means? Where else in the Bible would we get that impression that, hate, that that's what hate means? Why would I think that that's what hate means? Why? Okay. And also, he's saying that if you do that, if you hate your brother in this way by denying their testimony, Sniffing is saying that you're not saved. You, you, have eternal, you do not have eternal life abiding in you. You're a murderer. And you don't have eternal life abiding in you, right? Which means you're not saved, according to Sniffing, right? So then that means they're not my brother, okay? So your whole interpretation is absurd, Sniffing. Everything is wrong about it. And you're just adding your words to the book. That book doesn't say what you said it says. You're literally just adding words in. It's absurd what you're saying, man. Absurd. Look, I'm not going to get it. Like, this is very complicated stuff, okay? And this person just tries to just go through it quickly and just give you his interpretation in 20 minutes. 
this this very complex book. I explained some, some more of it in my book about in my video about uh, sniffing. I have another video where I kind of explain some stuff about First John that might help you to understand. If you wanna if you wanna learn more, put some questions in the comments and I'll make a video or something, whatever. Even though they believe in Jesus, that is what Toronto has done. He is like Cain. I mean, does this not describe Toronto Bible study? He doesn't know us. If he denies Greg Jackson, what do you mean, and David Benjamin as brothers, who are all solid gospel preachers, then he's going to deny you as a brother as well. Oh, I'm going to deny you now, guys. Oh, he denied them. He's going to deny you. No, first of all, I never really denied them. I don't believe, personally, I don't personally think. Or actually, now I'm kind of softer on that. Because back then I was really angry at those guys. But people have kind of told me to chill out. Over time, they've convinced me that maybe these guys are just confused. So maybe they are saved. I don't know. And I never, even in those videos, I never really denied that they could ever be saved. I was just saying, I think, my opinion is that they're not saved. Okay? But I never said that they, they're absolutely 100% not saved. I never said that. Uh, including what do you mean? And that's just my position because there's no way to know whether somebody's saved based on their behavior. So I can never be able to know. I just have my opinions about certain things. Okay. But what he's like, he's like, oh, they're all solid gospel preachers. What? Well, first of all, oh, we'll talk about a bit about how I don't think these two are stuff. These two are good gospel preachers. Ben, Greg Jackson and David Benjamin. What do you mean? I've never seen him ever preach the gospel. All he does is talk about his stupid current event stuff because he's a shill. But whatever. Oh, solid gospel preacher. Meh, 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 meh. Whatever. According to Toronto, you're not born of God. You're not righteous. Well, gospel preachers, then he's going to deny you as a brother. Yeah, you see? See, this is how when he says that, he goes, oh, if he denies them, he's going to deny you. He's trying to turn as if I'm like after all his all his, his audience of like. You know, I'm sure there's, the thing is, there's a lot of like young people, very young people that listen to this guy are very like kind of naive people. And so I feel bad for them, but I never, I don't deny people's testimony. I don't, because the thing is, I never, and I always say that we can't know whether someone's saved. We cannot know. We can never know. But sniffing is the one who's telling you that you can know based on whether they love the brethren. So he's the one that's denying people's testimony, not me. But once again, brother as well, according to Toronto, you're not born of God. You're not righteous, even though you believe in Jesus, that he does. This is very, this is very manipulative, right? He's trying to say, I never said that about anyone in his audience. And I don't, I don't do that kind of thing. Those guys, I said that, but like I say, I qualified it by saying, if you watch the videos, you can see, I, I always say that uh, it's very clear from what I teach that we can never know whether somebody's safe. So the idea that I'm denying all these people's testimony or whatever, that's ridiculous. I never even, there's no one on the face of the earth who I could ever say that I know 100% whether they're saved. And that's, that's the, the core issue I have with sniffing. Because he's trying to say you can know whether someone's saved whether, because based on whether they love the brethren. And that's backloading. Okay, so... Everything Stiffy's saying about me is a complete lie, all right? And he's using some very manipulative and deceptive tactics to do it, you know? I, I hesitate to call this person a shell sniffing, but he's, he's, really, he's really acting like one. It's really bad. Not born of God. You're not you as a brother as well. According to Toronto, you're not born of God. You're not righteous. Even though you believe in Jesus, that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. He's dishonest. No, I would never say anyone who says that, anyone who believes in Jesus and that he died for our sins, rose again and all that, I would say they're saved. But I would say, again, I do, I would say that they have to believe in the promise of eternal life. So let's talk about that. It's possible. Yeah. Honest and just wants to be right, irrespective of truth. You can't reason with these types of people and you can't take anything they say seriously. I don't know. Like, I, I am very willing to change my positions and people have convinced me to change my position on things. 
And actually, I used to be a cross gospel person, like uh, sniffing, and then I switched to crossless. So I, that's the position I changed. So I'm willing to learn, and people have taught me things, and I'm happy to learn stuff. Sniffing came to my 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 uh, Discord, and we were talking about stuff. He's the one that's just like. He said, I told him what, what my interpretation of, of 1 John 3.15, he said it was absurd or ridiculous or something. He just said, that's how he talks, you know? Like, even in your face, he'll just say your interpretation is ridiculous. Like, what? And his interpretation actually is ridiculous. Like, literally, I showed you. I hope I think I did show you. I hope I proved it. I hope, anyway, let me know. And of course, this guy has also made multiple videos about me. He slanderously accused me of backloading works into the gospel when he backloads works into the gospel. No, I don't backload works into the gospel at all. Because I never suggest that we can know whether someone's saved or not based on their behavior. So that's why I'm not backloading. But sniffing is backloading. Because he's suggesting to you that if you're saved, you will not hate your brother. Okay? He, that's what he's saying. So that is backloading. That is literal backloading, okay? That's exactly, the, by definition, that is backloading, okay? So I'm not backloading, and he is backloading, okay? And he's slandering me by saying this, and he's uh, obviously wrong. Backloading works into the gospel. When he backloads works into the gospel, he's putting you under bondage to the law. Tells you you must obey the law for your quote-unquote sanctification. You literal goof. You Thou shalt love goof. thy neighbor as thy you literal goof. We're teaching that you can get sanctification by following the law. Yes, that's what we're teaching. Okay? When he doesn't obey the law. But he accused me of backloading works into the gospel because I believe a Christian can't hate someone like Cain. You have oh, to wait, wait, wait. Law. Let me just Yes, that's what we're teaching. Let me just talk about okay? this before we move on. Because he thinks this is a big joke. That I teach that you, you need to get sanctification by following the law. So let's look at the Bible now because he just shows you memes. He doesn't show you the Bible. Oh, these are my notes. Sorry. Uh, where is it? Okay, this one. Okay. So let's see. So, okay, yes. He doesn't even tell you about this thing, but I'll explain it to you. You can see this here in, in Hebrews 10.10, 10, down to 10.14. By the which will we are sanctified, sanctified, okay? Through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ, once for all, okay? So once and for all, we've been sanctified by the body of Jesus Christ. But this man, after he had offered one, sac one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. For by one offering, he has perfected forever, them that are sanctified. That's us. Believers are sanctified, perfected forever. Okay? That's true. Sniffing teaches that. So he teaches a true thing there. Good enough. Fair enough. Sniffing. Now let me just show you this other thing here. Oh, sorry. What is this? Okay. I'll just read the whole thing. Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as you have received of us how you ought to walk, we'll talk about walking in a minute, as to please God, how you ought to walk and to please God, so you would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. He's talking about how the people are supposed to walk. That means live. That's how you live, okay? And we'll talk about that some more. For you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God. The will of God. Okay? Even your sanctification. Sanctification. Okay? That's what that says. That you should abstain from fornication. So, what is, what is Paul saying here? He's telling these people that for their sanctification, which is the will of God... They need to abstain from fornication, which is the commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. They gave, the apostles gave them these commandments by the Lord Jesus to abstain from fornication. Okay? 
that every one of you should should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any manner. Don't defraud your brother either. That's another thing. This is also part of the law. Abstaining from fornication, part of the law. Okay? Don't defraud your brother, part of the law. Because the, the, the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God has not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Uncleanness is by uh, disobeying the law. Holiness is by keeping the law. Okay, and again, we're not talking about keeping the law for salvation. This is for sanctification, as that verse just said. Okay, so I don't know if I should go. I had this whole thing I was going to show you about, like how to be how to how to sanctify, or maybe I'll talk about that later. When he doesn't obey the law, but he accused me of backloading works into the gospel because I believe a Christian can't hate someone like Cain. You have to realize there are certain sins Christians cannot commit. For example, a Christian can't worship the Antichrist because the Bible says those whose names are not written in the book of life, so only unbelievers will worship the Antichrist. So the question is, can a Christian worship the Antichrist? It's a yes or no question. If you say yes they can, now you're being dishonest like toronto no well, well what what uh, the thing is like i mean oh, let's listen to what you're ignoring the plain text if your answer is no a christian can't worship the antichrist a christian can't commit this sin you'd be correct but of course now you're quote unquote backloading works into the gospel according to toronto's logic i've asked toronto and his ilk this question along with the verse They'll just dance around the question, never giving a simple yes or no answer. Because again, they're dishonest and just want to be right, irrespective of truth. And the same. No, my simple answer, yes or no, was that yes, a Christian can, because that doesn't say a Christian cannot. That says they will not. Because, well, I mean, you're taking it by, by interpretation, but it's like, uh, and all that dwell upon the earth will shall worship him they will worship him whose names are not written in the book of life so that means the people whose names are written in the book of life the saved people will not worship him it doesn't say they cannot it says they will not okay so he's wrong right there okay right there he's wrong it doesn't say cannot it says will not it doesn't even say will not but we we interpret it that way right but i agree no christian will worship the antichrist only those whose names are not written in the book of life will worship the antichrist now how do you deal with that sniffing asked me and i said that i don't believe that that is a literal thing that's going to happen in the future because if that were that that's kind of like a workspace salvation there are people who who argue that that is literal uh, I mean, free grace people who argue that that's literal. What they usually say is that any Christian who tries to do that, who tries to worship the Antichrist, God is going to strike them dead. Like Ananias and Sapphira or those people from uh, 1 Corinthians 11 when they were like, they were taking the, the Lord's Supper without um, properly uh, recognizing their sin and stuff. So so therefore or without like properly walking with god so then that's why they were taken out it says now it says now many for this reason many, for this cause many of you uh, are weak and sickly and many now sleep right sleep being dead so that's the argument from people who are free grace who who believe that that's a literal thing my belief is that that's probably not a literal thing but it might be but either way it doesn't say that they that they cannot okay it says they will not or we interpret that to mean that they will not that's the only interpretation you can get from that if you try to say that that means they cannot they literally don't have the ability to right then you're reading that into the text that's not what that says okay that's not what that says 
So he's wrong there. Because again, they're dishonest and just want to be right, irrespective of truth. In the same way, how a Christian can't worship the Antichrist, a Christian can't hate another Christian like Cain. Should also point out. So like, yeah, so he just like now this thing, now this thing, what he's saying here, right? He just based on that misinterpretation of of uh, Revelation thirteen eighteen. He's coming and saying this now. Just like that, just like how a Christian can't do that, a Christian can't hate another Christian like Cain. Or what, what else can't a Christian do? What other things? The, the, the book of John says that no Christian, no, no one who's born of God committed sin. No one who is born of God committed sin. What does it say? Let me just, let me just check. Uh, he that committed sins of the devil. Um, whosoever, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. First John three, nine, right? So, I mean, if we're following like SOP's uh, understanding of what these things mean, right? then it would follow that no Christian, no one who's born of God, commits sin, right? But he's going to say that that part, that particular verse, that's about the new man, the new uh, newborn spirit in you. But this other thing about 1 John 3.15, that's about how Christians, you can't hate, you can't hate another Christian. What? Anyway, that's not what that that's not what that says, man. He just read that into that and he read and even the first John the Revelation thirteen eighteen verse, he just installed his interpretation into the verse. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say they can't worship the Antichrist. It says they will not. And even that's not what it actually says. We're just reading we're just interpreting that out. But I agree with him so far to the point of that, yeah, no safe Christian will ever worship the antichrist but when he says that that means that they cannot that's not what that says he just read that in okay like cain the antichrist is going to kill the saints it's all connected hating your brother like tech yeah, same really? way how a christian can't worship the antichrist a christian can't hate another christian like cain should also point out like cain the antichrist is going to kill the saints it's all connected Hating your brother like Cain at its root has to do with unbelief. It's aligned with the Antichrist. Hating your brother like Cain at its root is unbelief. It's aligned with the Antichrist. Like, do, you, do you see the like giant leaps of logic he's making here? First of all, hating your brother like Cain. I mean, according to what John was talking about, Hating your brother like Cain is literally killing them. That's what John was saying, 1 John 3, 12. But in Sniffing's mind, it means just denying their testimony. That's not what it says there, but that's what Sniffing read, okay? And so that means it's, it's at, at its root is unbelief, and so therefore it's aligned with the Antichrist. Like, what are you talking about, man? You're just... You just the, like this is what they call leaps of logic. It's like you, this is no, there's no logical connection between what he's saying here, the different things he's putting together here, or even even these things that he's putting together. They're just in his head too. They're not what the book actually says. So it's just absurd what he's saying, right? But this is how these people are, man. It's just like ludicrous. Root has to do with unbelief. It's aligned with the Antichrist. Like Cain, unsaved Paul, who was called Saul, hated and murdered Christians. Paul, before he was saved, would breathe out threatenings and slaughter against the saints. By the way, I don't like when people say that. Paul never actually, it doesn't say that Paul murdered Christians, okay? The Bible does not suggest that Paul murdered Christians. Many people say this, Sniffing just said it. The Bible doesn't say that, okay? He stood by... While those other people murdered Stephen, but that doesn't say that he killed that he killed Christians. That's not what that says. He stood by. He was like I think it says he was like uh, he was like permitting it or something like that. And then and so that's what it's talking about. It doesn't say that he that he killed Christians. The Bible doesn't suggest that. Okay. 
It says it was cons he was consenting unto his death. Okay. And now, uh, and he breathed out threatenings and slaughter against the disciple. He was breathing out threatenings and slaughter. It doesn't say he killed the Christians, man. These freaking Nazarenes, these Christians, I can't stand these guys. Like Cain, unsaved, unbelieving Jews hated and murdered Jesus Christ himself. Talks about this in John chapter 8. Like Cain, Catholics in the Catholic Inquisition hated and murdered Christians. These faith alone heretics think they're going to heaven. They just wait. Like Cain, again, the Antichrist will hate and murder Christians. That's four examples of unsaved unbelievers hating their brother like Cain. If you want to still call me a backloader, the burden of proof is now on you. Give me... So before we get into this ridiculous argument, what he's saying here is that he gives four examples of unsaved people hating Christians. What I'd like you to notice in these examples is that they're all of people literally killing Christians. Okay? And even the Cain example, that's literally killing someone, right? But his but he claims that hating your brother in first John three fifteen is just um denying their testimony. So he doesn't give you examples of people like just denying the testimony. He's saying that literal hatred hatred is like literally killing the killing the people, right? And so he doesn't have examples from the Bible where where hatred is defined as denying someone's testimony. That he doesn't have. But he has these examples where hatred is kill literally killing people, okay? So where in the, where in the Bible sniffing does it say that hating your brother is just denying their testimony? Where does it say that? Where? Your your foolish interpretation of that Cain line doesn't even make any sense, okay? So that's just the first example. The second thing he's saying is that because he gave me four examples of Christians or non-Christians hating the brethren right that somehow that shows that that means that christians can't do this i don't know why he said that you still call me a backloader christ will hate and murder christians that's four examples of unsaved unbelievers hating their brother like cain if you want to still call me a backloader the burden of proof is now on you give me real life examples of a christian hating other christians like cain that's all you have to do So, so what, remember that his examples are all like murderers, right? But he wants an example of Christians hating their brother. Okay. Now his example of, or his definition of hate, hating your brother is um, just denying their testimony. Right. So I don't know. Anyway, whatever. I'm going to show you some stuff. I hope, I hope this is good. This like, I'm sure there's probably more, more examples. I just quickly got this, but. I'm sure there's probably lots of examples, but, um, oh yeah, number one. Uh, I'll say, duh. Wait, what? Okay, so here we have um, Paul talking to Timothy, 2 Timothy 4.14. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of whom thou be thou aware also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. Now, some people would argue that Alexander the coppersmith was unsaved, but that's not true. He was saved. That's why it says the Lord reward him according to his works but that's what we see in um uh first corinthians 3 12 to 15 you know so if any man build upon his foundation this is about say believers if any man build upon this foundation gold silver precious stones wood hay stubble every man's work shall be made manifest work shall be made manifest for the day declare it 
because it has it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is if any man's work abide with it which he has built thereupon he shall receive a reward so the so the believers receive a reward based on our works and if any man's work shall be warned he shall suffer loss the loss of rewards but he himself shall be saved if so is by fire so believers are rewarded for their works right but unbelievers are uh judged by their works i believe let me just make sure Yeah, they were judged according to their works. The sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man, according to their works. So the unbelievers are judged according to their works. The believers are rewarded according to their works. So that's why I would suggest to you that uh, Alexander the Coppersmith was, in fact, saved. And so he is my first example of Christians hating their brother. Alexander the Coppersmith did Paul much evil, and therefore he hated his brother. At least to the point of where, um, and this and this also too, because you see how he's saying, of whom beware thou also, he hath greatly understood our words. It's because Timothy, he's telling Timothy how to run a church, and he's saying, you might encounter Alexander too in your in your life, because Alexander's a Christian. He's walking around with other Christians and, and doing stuff. And and part of, like he's he's a heretic, but he's like he's somebody that Timothy may encounter again. So that's why Paul's warning him because he is a believer. Okay. And another example I have is Peter in um, Peter in uh, uh, Galatians two eleven. Sorry, Galatians two eleven. So in this in this thing. You know, Peter was come to Antioch, I was stood into the face because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the bread, with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he was withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, Peter and Barnabas too, by the way, both started, they were not walking uprightly according to the gospel. They were not sitting with the Gentiles. They're not eating with the Gentiles. Okay. And then Paul, Paul gave him the business. Okay. If we, I said it to Peter, I said it to Peter before them all, if thou being a Jew livest after the manner of Gentiles, not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? You may say to me that this is not denying the testimony. I think it is, and I'll tell you why. Because if you look in Acts chapter 10, right? Acts chapter 10, which one is it? Um, oh, 10, 15. See, Peter, okay, just to let you know, Peter, like this is when the centurion um, uh, Cornelius, or I don't know if he's a centurion. He's a, he's a military guy, but he's a, Cornelius was a Gentile. He was getting... He was like he was always worshiping God, though, right? And then God sent him a vision about how Peter was going to come to him. And then Paul sent, and then God sent Peter a vision. And in the vision, Peter sees all these um, these different beasts, but that they were unclean animals. You know, they're unclean. And then he hears God say, "Rise, Peter, kill and eat." Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, what God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. So what God hath cleansed, that is, God hath cleansed them because they're saved, so don't call them common, unclean. Don't call them unclean, common, or unclean. Okay? And then if you go down here to 1028... Um, he says, he's saying to the Gentiles, to Cornelius and the Gentiles, he said unto them, you know that how it, how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. 
Certainly not the ones that have been cleansed, right? The ones that are saved, certainly not them, right? But when Peter dis, does this in, in uh, Antioch, oh, sorry, I was, I'm out of there. When Peter does this in Antioch, that is what he's doing. He's basically saying that the Gentiles are unclean. So that's why he can't eat with them. That's why the Jews never would eat with them because they're, uh, they're unclean, right? So he's denying that they've been cleansed by God. Because God said, call not what I have, what I, what I have cleansed, call not thou uncommon or whatever, right? Call not thou a common, right? Uh, that call not thou common, he says, right? So, so Peter's denying their, their, their testimony, these people. So that's my second example. You may, you may disagree. And then I thought of this one, Philippians 1, 15. Um, Some indeed preach Christ. And Paul is talking from his prison cell. He's writing this letter. Some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife. And some also of goodwill. So these are people who are preaching Christ. They are preaching Christ. That means they're not preaching some false gospel. They're preaching Christ. But some of them out of envy and strife. And some also of a goodwill. So it's people that are in the church. Some preach out of envy and strife. And some out of goodwill. The one preach Christ of contention. Not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds okay so the pe some some of the people the ones that are that are doing it out of envy and strife uh they're literally trying to add affliction to paul's uh bonds his imprisonment paul's in prison they want to like the, the 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 preaching that they're doing is trying to add something to his charge or something like to mess to 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 make it harder on him, his prison sentence that he's going through. And then, so that, I would say that's another example of uh, brethren hating uh, the brethren, okay? <clears throat> and I think there, I could find some other examples, but the point is, though, the point, the point, the important thing here is that, oh, sorry, I keep doing that. Um, the, the important thing here is that the, the like there's nothing in the Bible to suggest that Christians can't hate their brother or that they can't deny their testimony. That's just not in there. He just literally read that in. And first John 3:15, if you want to say that that means they're unsaved, well, believe me, it's not just this that's going to cause you problems with that belief, okay? That's literal backloading, all right? That's just not it's not part of the free grace understanding of the Bible. If you won't be able to understand First John. And then there's other things in the Bible that are going to mess up. Because theology is like that. Like if you have one mistake in your theology, it cascades and then the whole thing becomes a mess. So it's going to start with your, with like sniffing's ridiculous misinterpretation of First John. Just ludicrous, right? And then it's going to go on and on. Your whole interpretation of the whole Bible is going to be off. And also you're just going to be backloading heretics who, a preach, a preaching of a uh, uh, false gospel of works. But, but the thing is, Sniffing is the prime example of the person who is, he claims to be saved, and he's denying my testimony. He's also denying the testimony of anyone who hates their brother, according to him, right? Which, according to him, is just denying their testimony. So actually, sniffing is another example of this very thing that he's talking about. He's, he says, find me an example of a Christian who hates their brother. Well, you're denying my testimony, sniffing. You're denying the testimony of any Christian, any person who believed the gospel of their salvation, or sorry, who believed on Christ. I'm just going to be clear about this. And you're denying the testimony of anyone who believed on Christ. If they if they just go on to then deny other people's other believers' testimony, or if they hate their brother or whatever, you're saying that they're unsaved. So you are a prime example of this thing that you're asking me for examples of. Okay. 
So I hope uh, I hope I was clear. I don't know if uh, if that was confusing or anything. I, I don't know. I'm not even done yet. Sorry, guys. But wait, I was gonna say one other thing about this because what I think Peter, what I think Sniffing's doing is this. There were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. Okay, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies even denying the Lord that bought them. And you say to me, Mike, he's not denying the Lord. Well, let me show you. And they bring on themselves swift destruction. And many follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. So the people that are following sniffing, I'm going to make the argument now. I'm going to say that sniffing is like these false teachers. Whether he's saved or not, he's doing what they're doing. And literally denying the Lord that bought them. All right? That's my argument. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the evil, the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's just little, hear a little bit more from Sniffing, and then we'll, we'll talk about that. If I'm a backloader and a Christian can actually hate another Christian like Cain, you have to give me examples. If you can't give any examples then you have no right to call me a backloader. I've given four examples. Christians can't commit this sin because we recognize brothers. Anyway, I've had it with Toronto. He is like the type of person being described. So once again, so he's saying that Christians cannot commit the sin of denying their brother's testimony. Okay, they cannot. And also they, they always recognize the brethren. They always, just all Christians just recognize the brethren. That's just what they do. And if they don't, that means they're not saved. That's literally what he said. If you're okay with that, well, I guess that's okay for you, but don't call yourself free grace. And you're not even hyper grace. Hyper gracers don't believe that either, sniffing. So your hyper grace fake label, that's not what you are. Just admit that you're coming up with your own cult. You, David Benjamin, and Greg Jackson. You guys have a literal cult going on, okay? That's what you're doing. You are not part of any recognized or any kind of like theology that anybody else recognizes. You guys just have, have your own thing that you made up. Okay. This thing about no, no Christian will deny their brother's testimony. Nobody in hyper grace teaches that nobody in free grace teaches that. So you're none of that. You're not hyper grace. You're not free grace. You're something else. You're your own cult. Okay. So just admit what you are. Stop calling yourself by these other names, trying to get their glory, trying to get Christ's glory for yourself. I've been Galatians, Galatians 4.28. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. Even so it is now. Yeah, yeah. You're persecuting me. You're, telling, you're trying to tell me I'm unsaved because I don't believe your stupid nonsense, right? And also... You're trying to say anybody who doesn't recognize the brethren, they're unsaved. That's persecution from you. You're the bigger channel. So is uh, St. AVS. You guys are persecuting me. You're slandering me. I've shown it in this video. And I'm going to show St. AVS slandered me too. And trying to say I slandered him. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. This guy is all flesh. He's going to react to this video. The works of the flesh will manifest. He's going to mistake it for righteous indignation or whatever. And yeah, that's all he's going to do. He's going to put you under bondage to the law, telling you you must obey the law for your sanctification. Yeah, I explained that. I hope I hope I, I hope you understand that. I guess I have some, just some more I could talk about that. Uh, he's going to talk about walking the Spirit. He doesn't obey the law. When you tell others... So I, I showed you, right? First Thessalonians 4, uh, you clearly have to... There's some law-keeping involved in um, sanctification for the saved believer. Okay? It's not about keeping the law for your salvation because you've already been sanctified by faith forever perfectly. But now in your, in your walk as a Christian, God also is the will of God that you also continue to uh, sanctify yourself by abstaining from fornication and other law obedience, okay? Such as we, was described in 1 Thessalonians 4. To follow the law, whether it be for salvation or Christian living, you are putting yourself and others under the whole law. Yeah, so neither of these is about that, okay? For this thing, in Acts 15, what they're talking about is that these people in Acts 15 were trying to say that 
Well, the in in Acts fifteen verse one, the people were trying to say that you have to like get circumcised and follow the law for salvation. Okay, so that's just complete wickedness, right? That's just works based uh salvation wickedness. Then there were these other people in Acts fifteen verse five, I believe, the Pharisees that were living in Jerusalem. They were saved. They were believers. But they were teaching that you have to follow the law for like, I guess, the Christian life and stuff, right? Which you, you, people are going to say that's what I'm saying. But no, it's like they're talking about like getting circumcised and like, you know, eating the dietary laws and all that stuff. That's what that is about, Acts 15, okay? And... um even at the end of that, when they when they tell they tell the at the end of the Acts fifteen they tell the Gentiles like yeah you don't have to follow the law, you don't have to do all this stuff like follow like eating you eat whatever you want whatever but don't do these things don't drink the blood don't commit idolatry don't um don't fornicate and something else don't eat strangled animals okay so even in that in Acts fifteen even that they were still kind of like not getting in they're still kind of like trying to impose some kind of law obedience on them so that's the disciples they didn't get it yet they're still figuring it out okay so he's trying to say that that means i'm trying to put you under the law like that like it's just foolishness man and then and then this one in, in galatians 5 be not entangled again with with the yoke of bondage yeah because these people were trying to again get circumcised and those kind of things follow days and months and years that's what galatians says right so they would get circumcised and follow like the law like the law like the ceremonial law you might say that's what some people re refer to those things like uh circumcision the holidays like keeping the days the days the months and years that's what he says so that's what they were doing and he's saying that that's not part of your christian life you don't have to do that that's what that letter is about it's not telling them that they shouldn't, uh, like, avoid fornication and other things like that. That's why he continues to talk about it later on. That's why he says, you're, you're called unto liberty. I think it's 513. You're called unto liberty. But don't use your liberty as an occasion to the flesh. Okay? And what he's, what he's saying is, yes, you have liberty from the law. You have complete liberty from the law. But you should not use that liberty as a reason to that you can just commit sins and stuff and live live according to the flesh. And so that is law obedience. Like we, when he tells them, don't live according to the flesh, don't don't live don't like use it for according to the flesh. That's that's law obedience. He's telling them they, that they should continue to obey the law. You know, it's just not this ceremonial stuff the the moral one and again you're not under the law you're you're not under the law where it could ever like lead to your death or, or anything like that but you are you are expected to like kind of live the way the law expects you to live like have that kind of the law is teaching you how to live as a good christian okay I'll talk about that. I guess. Of course, they always lower the standard of the law. They'd rather live a lie than go on to perfection and live in spirit and in truth. Jesus said in John four twenty three through 24, But the hour cometh, and now is, and the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So what's it mean to worship God in spirit and in truth? To believe in Jesus and to love one another, the brethren, with truth. No, so mean no, you see, this isn't about uh, believing in Jesus and loving the brethren. What he says there, that's following commandments, okay? This is about worshiping. John 4 is about worshiping. The woman's asking him about, oh, should we worship on this mountain or on that mountain? Because she's a Samaritan, so, so they worship on Mount Gerizim, it's called. And and the Jews, who actually they they remember the right the right thing, right? They worship in, on Mount Zion on the at the temple, right? So he's saying to her, no. Well, eventually, now the true worshippers 
it's not about what temple or what mountain it's about you know you worship him in spirit and in truth but he's talking about worshiping it's not about like uh walking in the spirit or anything like that that's not nothing to do with that all right so once again sniffing is just pulling verses out and just reinterpret out of the context of the actual passage that it's in to just reinterpret it to give you his stupid interpretation so that he, he makes you believe what he wants you to believe which is nonsense I mean to worship god in spirit and in truth to believe in jesus and to love one another the brethren what's it mean to love the brethren that's not that's not what that means as, as we just talked and now he's going to say loving the brethren means again means you believe and acknowledge their sons of god because him in spirit and in truth so what's it mean to worship god in spirit and in truth to believe in jesus and to love one another the brethren what's it mean to so he's got the john 4 passage on the left what does it mean to worship him in spirit and in truth it means follow this commandment from one john and now he's going to tell you that this commandment which says believe on the name of his son jesus and love one another that's what the commandment is love one another he's going to tell you that all loving your your brother is is just recognizing them as a brother that's all it is it's not it's nothing about sacrificing your interest for theirs or you know like being kind to them and being patient with them. None of that. None of that. It's just recognizing that they're, they're your brother. That's what it is. That's what loving your brother is in Sniffing's mind. Because he's just butchered this Bible. These this, Every Bible verse he brought up in this thing is butchered. Okay? To love the brethren. Again, means you believe and acknowledge they're sons of God because they believe in Jesus. It's faith and love perfected. I believe in That's what loving your brother is. That's all it is. Just believe that they're, that you're, that they're your brother. Even acknowledge to believe in Jesus and to love one another, the brethren. What's it mean to love the brethren? Again, means you believe and acknowledge they're sons of God because they believe in Jesus. It's faith and love perfected. I believe in Jesus. You believe in the same Jesus. I believe you and acknowledge you're a child of God. See, how could you possibly? So just by doing that, now you love your love your brother. You don't have to. You don't have to sacrifice for him. You don't have to give charity to him. You don't have to do anything like that. Just uh, you know, just acknowledge that you died. You believe in Jesus, and I believe in Jesus, so we're brothers. That's all it takes to love your brother. That's what he just told you, okay? If that's what you think that 1 John 3, 2, 3 means, I feel sorry for you. Just because sniffing told you, now, now you believe that? That's ludicrous, okay? Where in the Bible does it say that that's what love means? Where? Where, sniffing? Where? Foolishness, man. Do you believe in the same Jesus? I believe you and acknowledge you're a child of God. See, how could you possibly get sanctification by not obeying the commandments? How could you? That's sinning. If you're, if you're sinning, you're not sanctifying yourself. We're teaching that you can get sanctification by following the law. Yes, that's what we're teaching. Okay? This is not true. You get sanctification by walking in the Spirit. Galatians 5.16 This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So he says you get sanctification by walking in the Spirit. And he's using this verse to prove this. Does this verse have the word sanctification in it? No, it doesn't. Now, I showed you a verse that has sanctification in it. 1 Thessalonians 4, uh, 3 to 7 or whatever. But So you can see the word sanctification is right there. This is how you do it. You abstain from fornication and other like law keeping. Like don't, don't defraud your brother. That's that's how you can do it, okay? It literally says, the Bible literally says that sanctification, this is how you do it, all right? He's telling you that this verse has to do with that, sanctification, but it doesn't even say sanctification. So who are you going to believe? Me, who actually showed you in the Bible where it says the word sanctification and how to do it? Or are you going to believe this foolishness, this side? Luke 16, this I say then, walk in the Spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The verse does not say, don't fulfill the lust of the flesh to walk in the Spirit. Don't sin to walk in the Spirit. Sinning less is not how you walk in the Spirit. That's putting the cart before the horse. You have to walk in the Spirit first to not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Yes, you have to walk in the Spirit to not fulfill the lust of the flesh. All right, I agree with that. What's he going to do now? He's gonna, now he's going to switch it again in your mind. 
He's gonna switch it. Watch. So how do you walk in the spirit? By the works of the law, like what Mike says? No, by faith. By the hearing of faith. Galatians three two five. This only what I learn of you. Received ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Of course you received the spirit by the hearing of faith. Therefore, to walk in the spirit, it's also by faith. Not by okay, so this verse in Galatians 3.2 says that they received the spirit. I mean, the basic and the interpretation is that they received the spirit, not by the works of the law, but by the hearing of faith. So when they received the spirit, received it, it was by faith. And Sniffing is trying to say that even though the, he's not giving you any Bible verse to prove this, he's just telling you that if you receive the Spirit by faith, that means you walk in the Spirit by faith. That they're the same thing. They, they, just like you receive the Spirit by faith, that's how you walk in the Spirit too. Is that what the Bible says? No, it, no, it isn't. Now let me show you what the Bible actually says. Okay, so this is Galatians chapter 3. Uh... This is so brutal. I'm sorry, you guys. This is probably so long, right? Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So it's not by the works of the law that you receive the Spirit, but by the hearing of faith. But look what it says down here. Um... Where is it? Oh, it's, oh, it's way down. Sorry. Same book, though. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Okay? So... If we live in the spirit, that means if we have faith in Christ and the and the, that means we live in the spirit. We are we're saved, we live in the spirit. Let us also walk in the spirit. So by your faith you live in the spirit. You received the spirit by faith, right? Galatians 3 2. You received the spirit by faith, by the hearing of faith. So now you receive it, you live in the spirit now by faith. But let us also walk in the Spirit, because he's telling them to walk in the Spirit. He's telling them to do something in order to walk in the Spirit. It's not something that just happens because of faith. Okay? By law. This idea that you... Therefore, by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith, of course you receive the Spirit by the hearing of faith. Therefore, to walk in the Spirit is also by faith, not by law. This idea that you have to believe in the finished work of Christ on the cross, that's another thing I've been talking wait, about. Wait, wait, let me just to talk about this a to walk in the spirit. So, he's trying to say that you, that you have to do it by faith, okay? What does that even mean, right? Well, let me show you some other verses that have challenged that idea. Now, remember, 1 Thessalonians 4, it was saying to... Um, this is the will of God, even your sanctification. The will of God is your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. So that's the will of God, for you to abstain from fornication for your sanctification. That's the will of God, okay? And the reason I showed you that is because I would say that the way, the thing is, okay, first of all, when, when he says walk in the Spirit, it's not about just having faith, okay? Walking in the Bible is often, not always, but is often this thing about, it's basically a metaphor for how you live your life, okay? Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, they asked Jesus, why, not, why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? They're asking him about why his disciples do not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but he's not literally talking about walking, right? He's saying about how they're saying about how they eat bread with unwashed hands. So walking in this instance is actually living a life according to the law, right? 
I just I just want you to understand what walking is. It's not just by faith. It's something. It's how you live your life. Okay. Uh, in this verse, Barnabas and Paul, um, but they were they were doing some miracles, and the people started trying to worship them. And they and they ripped their clothes. And they said they ran out and said, "No, sirs, why do you these things? We also are men of like passions with you." And preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are, are therein. When times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Walk. Okay, this is another example of they can walk in their way. This is the, that's how they live their life, right? And now Paul and Barnabas are trying to say, stop doing that. Stop those, leave those vanities. Like, stop trying to, like, worship us as, as Zeus or whatever, you know? They, they literally look. The priest of Jupiter, which is before the city, brought oxen and garlands into the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people for Paul and Barnabas, you know? Then that's why they rent their clothes. So they were, these people, we were going to, that's how they live their life. That's how they walk. And he's saying, the God in, in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. But now, no more. Okay? That's what the walk means. And the last one I wanted to show you was... Um, I am uh, This speak Jesus unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Light of life. He's not talking about just literally walking. Or just having faith. It's not just having faith. It's following him. Being a disciple. You will not walk in darkness. You will have the light of life. It's not about faith. It's following him. It's the walk. Okay? He that followeth me. It doesn't say he that believeth me shall not walk in darkness. It doesn't say that. You can believe in him and walk in darkness. But if you follow him, you shall not walk in darkness. That's something you have to do. Okay? So, you know, how do you walk in the spirit anyway? Let me show you some of those. I This is one thing I would say. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. A living sacrifice. This is... What, what do you mean, living holy? It means, like, it means, once again, following the law. Now, I'm not saying you're supposed to, you're not under the law. You're not obeying the law, okay? Because it's not under it. But you're following it. That's how you can live a holy life, right? Abstaining from fornication. Don't defraud your brother, et cetera, et cetera. These law things are good. And when you, when you transgress the law, that's sin, 1 John 3, 4. That, that's the opposite of this, Okay? But he says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay, remember that from 1 Thessalonians 4? This is the will of God. Even your, just, even your sanctification, that you abstain from fornication, right? So the will of God is that they, for their sanctification, that they abstain from fornication. Here, they can, they can show the will of God if they present their bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, and also be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect the will of God. He's not saying just have faith in Jesus. He's saying to do things, live a certain way. That's what he's saying. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Okay, that's how you can show the perfect will of God. Okay, that's how you can sanctify yourself. Okay. And then, of course, there's other things like Jesus said, follow him. And I was going to talk about that. Jesus said, follow, if you, if you want to be his disciple, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him. Okay, and that's not just have faith. Okay, that's doing things, denying yourself, taking up your cross means to follow him, follow his way. 
even though you're going to get persecuted and follow him, following him okay so that's how you can walk in the spirit and also walking in the spirit also involves not grieving the holy spirit that is that has um sealed you until the day of redemption ephesians 4 30 not grieving him is um you know being being uh like not sinning basically like sinning grieves sinning grieves him yeah and also paul says in first corinthians 11 1 he says be followers of me even as i also am of christ that's again following christ it's doing something so that's what i would say is walking in the spirit and sniffing says it's whatever this is also by faith, not by law. It's just by faith. Just by faith. Everything's by faith, you know? Yeah, we're saved by faith. Doesn't mean everything in, in a Christian life is by faith. Spirit is also by faith, not by law. This idea that you have to believe in the finished work of Christ on the cross, that's another thing. I've been talking about this in several, several of my recent videos. It's just a bunch of foolishness. If someone never believes in the finished work of the cross, if they never believe in the death, burial, and resurrection for their salvation, that person is not saved. Jesus literally... Yeah, see what he says there? So if a person doesn't believe that, they're not saved, right? That's what he just said. Now, he's trying. so he's trying to say that, but he was earlier he was saying that Jack Smack is his brother. Right? Let me just find this thing. Oh, there it is. Lord. Well, there are a bunch of stupid fools out there. See, see, crossless gospel accusing fools. Okay, because I what I teach is the so-called crossless gospel. That's what Sniffing's talking about. Okay, and this is what Jack Smack says about it. Forever, praise ye the Lord. Well, there are a bunch of stupid fools out there that have nothing better to do with their time. And they try to accuse myself and Bob Wilkin and anyone else associated with the Free Grace Theology, you know, camp as preaching a crossless gospel. Now, the reason why they're doing this is because we've been accused of just leaving this out, omitting the, cr the cross or omitting the death, burial, and resurrection out of our presentation. Well, this is absolutely not true. Every time I go over the gospel of somebody, I mention the cross. The contention we have is that what if somebody doesn't get to hear that part? but yet they still believe on Christ, we're saying they're saved. These stupid um, naysayers out there, these stupid false accusers are saying they're not. So number one, these people are basically declaring the unsaved saved because they believe all the right facts. This would be the case with Catholics. The Catholics believe in the cross and they're not saved. Calvinists, Arminians, Lordships. Yeah, exactly. The Catholics believe in... So anyway, you can watch the Jack Smack video, but I just want to show you that Jack Smack doesn't uh, agree with you sniffing on your on your denial of the uh, crossless gospel. So really calls himself the resurrection. If you don't believe in the oh yeah, here's another thing. So so okay. So I think I talked a little bit about this before, but my whole point is that I don't say don't preach the cross. I preach the cross just like Jack Smack was saying. I preach the cross. It's just that. I'm saying that they don't have to believe that particular thing, the death, burial, resurrection, to be saved. You can see my video, what we need to, what we must believe to be, to be saved. Okay. Um, I'm just saying, yeah, they have to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you get eternal life. Okay. John 20, 31, 1 John 5, 10 to 11 um and other verses okay but that's my point that's what i'm that's what i'm talking about okay the classic one is first john 5 1 whosoever believeth that jesus is the christ is born of god so all you have to do is believe that jesus is the christ and you're born of god what is the christ well in order to be sniffing's, uh, for, in order for sniffing's thing to agree with First John five one, the Christ has to mean a person who was, who was, uh, who died was died for our sins, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now, 
uh, I don't know where in what dictionary or in what Bible that's how Christ is represented. Some people will try to make that claim. The crossless people, I mean, the cross people, I'm crossless. The cross people, they're trying to make the claim that Christ means that. And so if they're right, then yeah, okay, fair enough. Sniffing's right. But I don't see how Christ means that. I would say Christ means what, what we read in uh, John eleven twenty five to 27. So you can check that out. I'll put it in the, in the subtitles, of course. Um, but yeah, so sniffing is actually, I would say he's actually adding to the gospel. Because unless Christ means, every everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. That's what 1 John 5, 1 says. So unless Christ means person who was, unless that, that's literally what that word means, right? Person who was crucified and or died for our sins, buried and rose again the third day. Unless that's what it means, then sniffing is teaching a false gospel. He's adding, he's saying that if you don't believe that, then you're not saved, right? So if I'm right about what you have to believe, where you just have to believe the, the promise, First uh, John 5, uh, 10 to 11, or, or John 20, 31, if that's right, if that's all you have to believe, the sniffing is adding something to that. So I would suggest to you that, what he, that by doing that, he's adding a work, okay? And so he's saying that if you don't believe that thing, you're unsaved, when that's not actually part of the requirements that you have to believe, so he's adding a work because it's a good work to believe those things about Jesus. They're, they're true things. We should believe the gospel. It's very good to believe it. But that's not what gets you eternal life. You have to believe on Jesus Christ. Believe that Jesus is the Christ. And you are, you'll be born, born, uh, born of God. From the cross, if they never believe in the death, burial, and resurrection for their salvation, that person is not saved. Jesus literally calls himself the resurrection. If you don't believe in the resurrection for your salvation, you don't believe in the real Jesus for your salvation. You believe in another Jesus that didn't die for your sins. He wasn't buried and he didn't rise from the dead. You're still in your sins. You have to... So, okay, wait, wait, okay, okay. Yeah. You know believe what? in All the right. death, burial, and resurrection for their salvation, that person is not saved. Jesus literally calls himself the resurrection. If you don't believe in the resurrection for your salvation, you don't believe in the real Jesus for your salvation. See, so this is where he's he's like, again, they're taking the Bible out of context. This is their false interpretations of the Bible. One more time, I'll show you again. This is, this is good because this is the verse I was talking about. <clears throat> because this is where she says, he, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? He asks her that question. Do you believe that stuff I just said? And she says, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. So I'm what my argument is that the Christ means the same thing as this, the Son of God, and it means the same thing as a, as we should come into the world, and it also means all this stuff. Because she answered his question, do you believe this? about this stuff she answered his question by saying yea lord i believe that thou art the christ so when it when in first john 5 1 when it says he that believeth that jesus is the christ is born of god i'm suggesting to you that that's what christ means this stuff believe that jesus is the resurrection and the life and whosoever believeth in me and that he that, that if you believe in him you'll never die that that's what the christ means and also the Son of God, which should come into the world. Okay, that's what Christ means, okay? But what, what Sniffing is saying that you have to believe in the resurrection or you don't believe in Jesus because Jesus says, I am the resurrection. So if you don't believe in the resurrection, for, according to Sniffing, if you don't believe in the resurrection from 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 4, which was Christ's own resurrection, from the dead three days after he was cruci after he was crucified and buried, right? He rose. That was the resurrection of Christ. But that's not what the resurrection that Jesus is talking about here. Martha saith unto him, eleven twenty four. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall. Oh, because Jesus was saying that thy brother shall rise again. 
right? Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. The resurrection at the last day, okay? So she knows that he will rise again at that resurrection. And Jesus says, I am the resurrection. Because he's saying to her that he is that resurrection at the last day. He's not talking about his own resurrection. That's not what he's saying here. So Sniffing is just taking that verse out of context like he always does to prove his false interpretation of the Bible, which is wickedness. You believe in another Jesus that didn't die for your sins. He wasn't buried and he didn't rise from the dead. You're no, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I mean, all I'm saying to you is they, they have to believe... Uh, it is the same. Oh, there's only one Jesus who is the Son of God, the Christ, and who gives eternal life to everyone that believes in Him. All right. So that's what they have to believe, and that is that Jesus. And so it's the correct Jesus. There's no other Jesus who does who is the Son of God, the Christ, and who gives eternal life to whoever believes in Him. So it's only they believe in the correct Jesus. They absolutely do. Okay. But what I'm saying to you is. That if they didn't know about the res know about the resurrection and the burial and the death, they would still be saved. They don't have to know those things. And even if they deny those things, they if they believe the the fact that he's the Christ, the Son of God, and he and he gives eternal life to whoever believes in him, they would still be saved. Okay, that's what I'm saying to you. And um, if you don't like it, well, we can debate it. But these videos are terrible. They're just proving how terrible you are at understanding the Bible. But he that he that cometh preaches another Jesus whom you have not preached. And see see how this he brings in this first from Second Corinthians eleven. And this is talking to save people. He's not talking about how to get saved or anything. When he when he tells them then that there's someone's going to come preaching another Jesus to them, he's saying that they'll preach another Jesus to you, save people, and you'll you'll just get a wrong I, theological ideas and just be be wrong about stuff. He's not saying to them that that they need to um, believe in the in the Jesus from 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 4, otherwise they're not going to be saved. He's not saying anything like that. But once again, they take verses out of context to prove their false interpretations. You're still in your sins. You have to trust in the real Jesus for your salvation. You believe in another Jesus that didn't die for your sins. He wasn't buried and he didn't rise from the dead. You're still in your sins. You have to. No, I'm saying they believe in the same Jesus. They just they don't have to believe all that stuff. Death for sins, death, uh, burial, resurrection. They don't have to believe all that stuff. They only have to believe that he's the Christ, the Son of God, and that he gives eternal life to whoever believes in him. Okay? And if they believe that, which is just, that's the same Jesus. There's no other Jesus who fulfills those three things. There's only one Jesus who fulfills those three, and it's the same one who died on the cross. But I'm just saying they don't have to know about the cross. They could even not even know about the cross and they'd still be okay. And I would say even if they deny the cross, if they believe the first three things, then they're saved. They don't have to, nothing to do with that. That's just heresy. If they, if they don't believe the cross, that's heresy. They're, they're wicked for not believing the cross, but that doesn't mean they're not saved. To trust in the real Jesus, that includes the gospel. And of course, he's most likely going to play with words, trying to say I'm not saved. When I literally trust in the Jesus who died for my sins, was buried, and rose again. You yeah, you see, he trusts in the Jesus who died for his sins, was buried, and rose again. But did he trust that Jesus Christ gives eternal life to whoever believes in him? Because if he didn't, then he may not be saved. But I'm not even suggesting that. I don't really care. Or I do care. I want Stephen to be saved. And I, and I would suggest that he is saved. I do think he's saved. But if that's what you believe, and this is my problem with these people, right? They always teach stuff like that. Greg Jackson will say, you have to believe on the finished work of Christ on the cross. Or believe in the gospel. But the Bible doesn't say you have to believe the gospel to be saved. It says believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Again and again and again. Even the one verse they always pull out, Ephesians 1.13 to say, oh, you have to believe the gospel. It says in that verse, they heard the gospel and then they believed on Jesus. They believe your belief, the object of your faith for salvation, for eternal life, is not the gospel. It's Jesus, okay? 
People pull out Romans one sixteen. I guess maybe we could talk about that in another video. You can't say Maybe I'm not saved. You are now denying the gospel for me, which means you're denying the gospel for yourself, which means you don't recognize me, which means you hate me like the world and Cain. No, whatever. This is just stupid. This is just his foolish interpretation. If you believe that, then this adds up, right? But it is still, there's two things that Sniffing did wrong here that I would say the fact that he trusted in Jesus Christ who died for his sins was buried and rose again. He doesn't talk about the promise of eternal life. That could indicate that he's not saved. Because if you don't believe in the promise of eternal life, you're not saved. Okay? And that would be the case. Almost all free gracers who argue for this uh, death, burial, resurrection belief thing, the cross gospel or whatever, they all believe that you have to believe in the promise too. Very few. There's some people that, that believe you don't need the promise part. But the fact that he doesn't he doesn't even talk about it, that could indicate that he's not saved. Okay. Also, he also has this this false view of, of salvation where anyone who's saved will not hate their brother. All right. That's backloading. All right. And the reason why we consider backloading such a serious heresy is that if somebody believes that when they're coming into the faith, they won't be saved because that's a work. So not hating your brother is a work okay and if sniffing says that anyone who's saved they will not hate their brother then that's backloading so i don't know if sniffing always believed this so i doubt it he probably at one time just believed the normal thing but if it's true that he always believed this then he's not safe so i'm sorry i'm not trying to uh deny your testimony or hate you uh, the loving thing for me to do is to tell you that if you believe these stupid things you put here, and you didn't properly understand what you're supposed to believe to go to heaven, then you're not saved. Yeah. If this is if you believe this without believing the if you believe the thing on the left without believing the promise, then you're not saved. If you believe the thing on the right where you don't recognize your brother or like anyone who doesn't recognize their brother is unsafe. If you believe that that's backloading, that would mean you're not saved either. Okay. I don't know what you believed when you first got saved. Maybe you believe the real gospel at that point, or you believe the real truth of the gospel. And then you got saved by believing in Christ alone for your salvation and not relying on your not hating your brother thing. Maybe that's what you believed back then when you first got saved. But if you always believe this thing that you're talking about here, then yeah, you're not saved. Okay, so I'm telling you that as a warning to help you. It's a loving thing to do. I'm not hating you. It's a loving thing to do. In conclusion, I believe Toronto Bible study has committed the sin unto death found in First John. That has to do with Cain. He doesn't acknowledge sons of God based on their testimony, based on their belief in Jesus. He shows he doesn't believe the gospel when he denies the gospel for someone else lying being a deceiver saying they're not righteous they're not sons of god it's total unbelief and hatred committing murder in his heart first john five sixteen. if any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death there is a sin unto death i do not say that he shall pray for it look what he's saying here like this he's trying to say and that I this Toronto is bible what? study has committed the sin unto death found in first john oh, that has to do with cain I'll give him life for them. Look what he's saying here. He's saying that this is that the sin unto death is that thing where you're saying that you deny your brother's testimony. This is two chapters after that thing where he pulled out like first John three fifteen is the one where he says, If you hate your brother, you're a murderer, and no no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. So Stephen is saying that if you hate your brother, you're not saved, right? And then he turned hate your brother into deny their testimony. And now then, then two chapters later, Paul uh, John starts talking about how some, some sins are unto death. All right. And if they're not unto death, then you can pray for your brother and then, and then God will um, help them. If there's a sin unto death, and he's saying, he's saying to them, they should pray for their brother when they commit sins. If their brother commits a sin unto death, then he's saying, you don't, you, he's not saying, he's not saying that you shall pray for them. He's not saying that you should not. He's not like prohibiting them, but he's saying that I'm not commanding you to pray or it's not your duty or anything to pray for brothers 
when they commit those sins. But you could still do it if you want. That's what John's talking about. Some sins are not unto death. And you shall pray for those brothers. That's what he's, when he says shall, he shall ask. That's like, it's like this imperative. To, he's commanding it. Like, like thou shalt not kill. It's like that kind of thing. You shall ask. And so he's telling them to pray for the brethren when they sin not unto death. And then he's saying, if they sin unto death, certain sins are unto death. So we don't know exactly what he's talking about. There's theories about it. But he's saying to them, you don't have to pray for them. But you can if you want. He's not prohibiting it. That's what that's about. Okay, It's got nothing to do with Sniffing's ridiculous interpretation that he just made up and just stuck it in there. And I hope, I hope this video, this is a long one, I know. I, I don't know. I hope you guys got something out of this because this is f foolishness, man. And that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. And I believe Toronto Bible study has committed the sin unto death found in First John. That has to do with Cain. Oh, this is things on loop. Anyway, so I don't know. I still was because the the Saint EVS like video is taking me longer than than this one, so I thought I could put this up. I hope it wasn't too long. I'm very sorry, but. Unfortunately, when these people butcher Bible verses like that, then I have to take the time to give it to you in context. I hope I did a good job of that here. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching Toronto Bible Study. Hallelujah.